Hi there, this is Dr. John Bergsma from the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology and Franciscan University of Steubenville coming to you on the solemnity of St. Joseph, our Father and Lord. What a magnificent solemnity this is, too, because as you certainly know, Pope Francis declared this to be the year of St. Joseph. So here we are in a holy year dedicated to this great father of faith, and now we are on his feast day, on this solemnity. What a tremendous uh, time. Although formally this is not a holy day of obligation, I would certainly urge everybody to get to Mass today on this Feast of St. Joseph in this holy year for him. And what a figure he is for our time. My heart was so cheered when I heard that Pope Francis had dedicated this year to St. Joseph because I thought, who better exemplifies the things that our culture needs? Our culture is falling apart because the family is disintegrating. And the main reason the family is disintegrating is because father absence, because of men not taking responsibility for their wives and for their children, especially for their children. And uh, did you know one in three American school children uh, grows up without their father in the home? And in some communities, in in, uh, city communities, urban communities, oftentimes this is more like two out of three American children in our cities grow up without their father in the home. This is incredible Uh, in terms of the damage that it does to our society. And St. Joseph is a man who exemplifies all the virtues that we need to recover in order to have health and peace and prosperity. He is this good father that raises a son who is not his own biologically, and he is the good husband who uh, stays faithful to his wife, Mary, even under very unusual and sometimes trying circumstances. What a godly man. Oh, I just love him to death. So let's jump into our first reading here. Second Samuel 7, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. Folks, this is a huge, huge, huge passage of Scripture. This is 2 Samuel 7. Biblical theologians all know this is the Davidic covenant chapter. This is the account of God giving a covenant to David. Why is that significant? Because this is the covenant that is renewed and restored in Jesus. Jesus is the son of David and he comes back and he reestablishes David's kingdom and transforms it also into the kingdom of God and it is manifest externally to us as the church militant in this world. In fact, In all the senses of the church, triumphant, suffering, and militant, the church is coterminous. That is to say, it is the same as God's kingdom. Okay, so the kingdom of Christ is the church in all its senses. And uh, so this covenant to David by which the kingdom is established, this is huge. It's the foundation for the church. And we usually interpret these covenant promises to the seed of David with respect to Jesus, but on this solemnity, we're thinking about how they apply to Joseph, who also was a descendant of David. And it's important to remember, Joseph was the head of the house of David. Just like right now, you can probably look up online and find out who is the current head of the house of Habsburg, you know, who would be basically emperor of Europe if the Habsburgs were still ruling, which they aren't. But anyway, you can find out who the head of the house of Habsburg is, even though that dynasty is no longer in power. Likewise, even though the Davidic dynasty had not been in power for centuries, nonetheless, Joseph was the head of the house. He was the one who would have sat on the throne if the house of David was in power in the first century and had not been displaced by the Herods and uh, other imposters. And so, Uh, Joseph was a royal figure. He was the heir to the throne. 
And I like this line, it is he who shall build a house for my name. I like to think of Joseph as the builder of the church because the holy family, you know, was the house of David in a sense. It was the royal family. The holy family was the royal family. Um, Joseph and Mary were king and queen of Israel, even though they lived in humility. And Joseph established this righteous home uh, that was the, the garden where uh, our Lord grew up and flowered and blossomed. And it was a garden of holiness and a house of righteousness that Joseph established. And it was the prototype of the church. And a lot of that was due to the fact that Joseph was a righteous man. We, um, we have a second reading because it's a solemnity, and this comes from Romans 4. And this reading from Romans 4 emphasizes many times that Abraham was given this promise that he would be a father of many nations. And that has come true through Abraham's descendant, Joseph. Joseph was the foster father of our Lord, um, the only human father that our Lord knew. Joseph did all the things that a human father did for our Lord. He taught him to pray, taught him to work, taught him a skill, how to be a craftsman, etc. And through Jesus, St. Joseph has become a father of many nations. To, you know, People from all over the earth now invoke Joseph's uh, intercessions, look to him for guidance, um, uh, ask his help in learning to pray and make progress in the spiritual life. St. Joseph has become a father of many nations, of many people. Uh, this promise to Abraham has come through, come true through uh, St. Joseph. And now we look at our scripture reading. We have two options, either Matthew 1, which uh, is the Annunciation to Joseph, or uh, Luke 2, the finding of the boy Jesus in the temple. The themes of both readings are, are obedience. So let, let me concentrate on uh, Matthew 1 here. Um, now this is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother uh, Mary was betrothed to Joseph. She was found with child. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, was unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Now, betrothal was legally binding. Mary was already, for all legal purposes, Joseph's wife, but they had not begun living together. Um, this is kind of an interlude transitional period um, where Joseph would have been making preparations for their common home, and then when he was ready to have her come and live with him, then the wedding would be celebrated and they would begin their common life. So we're in that transitional period of their marriage, uh, but they are legally married. And uh, then, of course, it's discovered that uh, she is bearing uh, our Lord. And I love what this says about Joseph. It says, Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, dikaios in the Greek, very profound word. It runs through the letters of St. Paul where he talks about being justified uh, by uh, faith and by grace in Jesus Christ, that we can become dikaios, which is uh, just or righteous. How would you like it if the Holy Scriptures uh, said about you that you were a righteous person? What kind of affirmation would that be? You know, there's very few characters of any significance in the Bible about whom nothing bad is said. And uh, Joseph is one of them. This is the judgment of the Holy Spirit on St. Joseph's life. He was our righteous man. What a stunning affirmation. I'd love to, love to have that, uh, you know, as a letter of recommendation. Holy, Holy Spirit, can you fill out a letter of recommendation? Sure, you are righteous. Thank you. Okay, that'll get you a, a job or whatever. Anyway, you know what I mean. So what an affirmation of the Holy Spirit. He was a righteous man. Isn't that what we aspire to? Wouldn't, don't we want to hear one day uh, our Lord say about us that, that we were righteous in his eyes. It's possible through the power of the Holy Spirit to have that righteousness. And we can, we can uh, ask for Joseph's intercessions to get there. So he has a dream where uh, the angel shows up to him. Presumably this would be Gabriel, I would expect, although the angel's not named. And he says, don't be afraid to, marry, to take Mary to your home. 
uh, the child is of the Holy Spirit. You name him Jesus. Okay, so this is, I mean, poor Joseph. He he had plans for his life. He had a way that he thought his life was going to run. And then all of a sudden, an angel shows up in a dream. And all of a sudden, oh my goodness, I'm going to be the foster father of, um, you know, the son of God. You know, I'm going to be the father of the Messiah. Okay, life change, you know. Wake up in the morning, everything's completely different. Got a new mission in life. What I love is Joseph's docility to this. He just takes it in stride. His life is completely turned upside down. He doesn't bat an eye. He just wakes up in the morning and and does what he was told to do. This obedience is so beautiful. This obedience is part of his righteousness. And it's the same obedience that his son will exemplify. In um, In the other option for today, which is Luke 2, we have the finding of the boy Jesus. And at the end of the story, it says he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and he was obedient to them. See, this is, you know, our holiness is just being docile to the leading of God, uh, even even and especially when that leading comes through authority figures in our lives, uh, our parents, uh, a spiritual director, a pastor, uh, a bishop, and so on. Um, so we listen to those who are in spiritual authority, and uh, we try to be docile to them because that is part of uh, imitating God, because God is an obedient God. God is a humble God. God sets the example for our obedience by coming down and being humble and obedient uh, as a human person. Wow, that's a lot to think about today. So St. Joseph, the humble, obedient, righteous, royal example, who is a father and Lord to many nations. What a fantastic solemnity this is. This has been Dr. John Bergsman from the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology at Franciscan University of Steubenville, wishing you a blessed solemnity of St. Joseph.